I'm Beth Allison from Camp Hacker and I'm here at the Tri-State Camping Conference in Atlantic City, New Jersey. This morning it's my privilege to spend some time with our keynote presenter, renowned author, speaker and filmmaker, Jean Kilborn. Jean, thank you so much for agreeing to spend time with us today. We're really privileged to have you here. Thank you, it's my pleasure. Now, before we begin, I just wondered if you'd like to tell us a bit about your camping background. I went to lots of camps when I was a little girl, and there were some aspects of my childhood that were kind of bleak, so camp was a real oasis for me, and it was very, very important. I learned how to swim, I learned all kinds of things, that stay, skills that stay with me. I made some friends, some friends I still have, but mostly it was a chance to be uh, independent in a safe environment, you know, and, to, yep. uh, and just have a wonderful time being outdoors and uh, being uh, with people, peers, and with some really trusted adults. So I loved it. I went to Girl Scout camp, and I also went to some other couple of other kinds of camps too. And then when my daughter was little, I sent her to some camps as well, and she had a great experience as well. She learned how to ride at one camp, oh, she great. learned how to swim at others, and she, she had a terrific time. Great. So you really know the people you're about to present to then? I think so, yeah, yes. And yeah, what I have tremendous uh, admiration for people in the field. I think it's really important work, and I think particularly these days, it's a chance for, um, the only chance in many kids' lives to get away mm -hmm. from a media-saturated environment. Right, mm -hmm. right. Now you are internationally recognized for your groundbreaking work uh, on the image of women in advertising from, from work such as Can't Buy My Love to your documentary series, Killing Us Softly. How and why did this become such a passion for you? I started collecting ads in the late 60s and there were many things that led to my interest. I, I was getting involved in the women's movement at that time. I've had some experiences as a model, which is one of the few ways that a woman could make a lot of money in those mm -hmm. days, but it was also very alienating. But it left me with a lot of interest in the whole idea of the image. So I started collecting ads and looking at them and, and getting more, more and more deeply involved. I didn't intend to make a career of it, <laughs> let alone to launch a field of study, but that is in fact what happened. Great. Now in your book, um, so Sexy So Soon, uh, you focus obviously on sex and sexiness in popular culture and in media and its negative impact on childhood. So where is society now and where are we headed? hard to know where we're headed. I, I started talking about the sexualization of little girls way back in mm -hmm. the 70s, and in my first version of Killing Us Softly, which I made in 1979, I talked about it. But it's gotten infinitely worse mm -hmm. since then. And it's not just little girls who are affected, it's little boys as well, and it's starting younger and younger, so that we have tiny girls now presented in very sexualized ways. Uh, and it's become normalized in a way that I think is very frightening. Now, candy professionals are passionate about changing the world too. Mm -hmm. So, what can we do this summer and throughout the year to help our campers and staff get the right messages? For one thing, I think just the fact that, that the campers are in a different kind of environment is really important, that for a, a time they're separated from these images and from this pressure to, uh, I hope anyway, to look a certain way, to act a certain way. So that's one thing that's just very important by itself. It's also important if the camping professionals are aware of these issues and can start to talk about them, sometimes just very casually, but just to make them conscious, you know, to talk about uh, the pressure on girls to look a certain way, the pressure on boys to look at girls in a certain way. Just to bring that out into consciousness can help. If it's possible within the curriculum of camp to, to do any media literacy, you know, that would be wonderful to sort of really do something more focused in terms of trying to help our kids to become critical viewers of these messages. And that can be done fairly simply. It doesn't have to be a huge deal, but it can make a very big difference just to make kids start to focus on it in a conscious way. Great. Well, thank you so much for your time. We really appreciate it and we've enjoyed having you. Thank you. Thanks so thank much. Thank you. And we really look forward to your presentation. Thank you.